And let's finish the 13th chapter of A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, which is called Free Men. Really, just well written. I mean, this is the first time I, I've read this book, and I dig it. I hope that I'm getting the message across to you, the reader, even though I'm reading it in a funny voice. The world of the 6th century is not very different than the world of today, um, although I feel... And I feel like that's the message that Mark Twain wanted to get across, even though he wrote this book more than a hundred years ago. So let's continue. He's talking about how these supposedly free people are taxed to death and have to work, you know, till they're dead. And his uh, the Yankees' companion, you know, thinks they're disgusting, but he. He kind of get he kind of gets the situation they're in. He just wants to explain to them that you know they could have a better government. So we'll continue from there. They all looked unhit and said they didn't know that they had never thought about it before, and it hadn't ever occurred to them to say that a nation could be so situated that every man could have a say in the government. I said I had seen one and that it would last until it had an established church. Again. They were all unhit at first, but presently one man looked up and asked me to state that proposition again, and state it slowly, so it could soak into his understanding. I did it, and after a little he had the idea, and he brought his fist down and said he didn't believe a nation where every man had a vote would voluntarily get down in the mud and dirt in any such way, and that to steal from a nation its will and preference must be a crime, and the first of all crimes, I said to myself, this one's a man. If I were backed by enough of his sort, I would make a strike for the welfare of this country and try to prove myself its loyalist citizen by making a wholesome change in its system of government. You see, my kind of loyalty was loyalty to one's country, not to its institutions or its office holders. The country is a real thing. The substantial thing, the eternal thing, it is the thing to watch over and care for and be loyal to. Institutions are extraneous, they are its mere clothing, and clothing can wear out, become ragged, cease to be comfortable, cease to protect the body from winter, disease, and death, to be loyal to rags, to shout for rags, to worship rags, to die for rags, that is loyalty of unreason, it is pure animal. It belongs to monarchy, was invented by monarchy. Let monarchy keep it. I was from Connecticut, whose constitution declares that all political power is inherent to the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their benefit, and that they have at all times an undeniable and indefensible right to alter their form of government in a matter such as they may think expedient. Under that gospel, the citizen who thinks he sees that the commonwealth's political clothes are worn out and yet holds his pace and does not agitate for a new suit is disloyal. He is a traitor, that he may be the only one who thinks he sees this decay does not excuse him. It is his duty to agitate anyway, and it is the duty of the others to vote him down if they do not see the matter as he does. And now here I was, in a country where a right to say how the country should be governed was restricted to six persons in each thousandth of its population, for the 994 to express dissatisfaction with the regent system, with the regnant system and propose to change it would have made the whole six shudder as one man. It would have been so disloyal, so dishonorable, such putrid black treason, so to speak, I was become a stockholder in a corporation where 994 of the members furnished all the money and did all the work, and the other six elected themselves a permanent board of direction and took all the dividends. It seemed to me that what the 994 dupes needed was a new deal, the thing that would have best suited the circus's side. The circus side of my nature would have been to resign the boss ship and get up an insurrection and turn it into a revolution. But I knew that the Jack Cade or the Watt Taylor who tries such a thing without first educating his materials up to revolution grade 
is almost absolutely certain to get left. I had never been accustomed to getting left, even if I do say it myself. Wherefore the deal, which had been for some time working into shape in my mind, was of a quite different pattern from the Cade Tyler sort. So I did not talk blood and insurrection to that man who sat there munching black bread with that abused and mistraught herd of human sheep, but took him aside and talked matter of another sort to him. After I had finished, I got him to, lead me, to lend me a little ink from his veins. With this and the sliver I wrote on a piece of bark, put him in the man factory, and gave it to him and said, Take this. To the, pl to the palace at Camelot, and give it into the hands of Amius Lapulet, whom I call Clarence, and he will understand. He is a priest, then, said the man, with some and some enthusiasm went out of his face. How, a priest? Didn't I tell you that you are no chattel of the church, no bond slave or pope or bishop can enter my man factory? Didn't I tell you that you couldn't enter unless your religion, whatever it might be, was your own free property? Mary, it is so, and for that I was glad, wherefore it liked me not, and bred me in a cold doubt to hear of this priest being there. He, But he isn't a priest, I tell you. The man looked far from satisfied. He said, He is not a priest, and yet can read. He is not a priest, and yet can read, yes, and write too. For that matter, I taught him myself. The man's face changed. And it is the first thing that you yourself will be taught in that factory. I? I would give blood out of my heart to know that, Art. Why, I will be your slave. Your... No, you won't. You won't be anybody's slave. Take your family and go along. Your lord, the bishop, will confiscate your small property. But no matter, Clarence will fix you all right. And that is the end of chapter 13.